All right, folks, he's back on the show, friend of the show, the actor and zip going to the big dance out of the match. It's Coach John Gross. How you doing, Coach? Good to see you, man. Doing great over there. Great, JR. <laughs> great to see you, man. I haven't gotten much sleep the last few days, but other than that, I'm doing well. I hear that, Coach. You can't complain. This March Madness is crazy right now, Coach. And for you, man, uh, this is your sixth win season at Akron, four of which of 22-plus wins. So talk about that coach you developed out there at Akron, man, and how proud of you. All the guys from your program kept that same standard every week, getting better each day in practice and playing, playing the right way up there for you, man. No, it's been unbelievable, JR, especially the last five-year window. And, you know, it's it, the best part of it is you start hearing from those guys that played five years ago that won the first championship in 2020. And I still think about those guys a lot because we were the number one seed, won, won the regular season by two games outright, tied the regular season wins record at Akron, and those guys didn't get a chance to play in that tournament because of COVID. Um, so I think about those guys all the time and how special that team was. But that class really started the five-year run here where we've won more games overall and more league games than any school in our league. So very blessed. Uh, I've had a great run. And those guys in 2020 taught what are now our seniors here in 2024, this five-year window. They kind of showed them the way. And these guys that are seniors now are doing a great job of showing our younger guys the way. And, Coach, I really love how your team responds to adversity. It's a tough end of the season, but your guys didn't quit. They didn't fold. And talk about sitting, knowing that your guys had the right boss, despite some adversity, to come back and bounce back, and come and beat a, a Miami team, come and beat Ohio, come and beat a tough team coached by Cindy down there at Kent State. So, talk about your team's resolve, Coach. Come back at that hard end of the year, man. Yeah, no, their mental toughness is exceptional, and we needed that because you're right, the last week was a rough one in the regular season for us, and I think, J.R., what happened, and Greg Tribble said this, you know, as much as I tell them not to get on social media and stay off Twitter and all those different <clears throat> modalities, they do it, and, of course, they were reading what people were saying, you know, uh, the way that last week went, and I think it motivated them, put a little bit of chip on their shoulder heading into Cleveland. You know what, Coach, was good about that, Coach, is like – I know when when you win when, when you win win as much as you won, guys sometimes develop complacency or bad habits. To get every get in the film room on the practice court really coach them hard, kind of reset, refocus as we get into where it counts in Cleveland. Talk about that aspect of being able to coach your team a little bit harder because you wasn't winning, because knowing you're winning, sometimes you can't coach hard as you want to be able to really lock in and refocus that mindset to play the right way and have that winning mindset. No, there's no question, JR. I think. You know, obviously, we didn't want to lose either of those games that last week of the regular season. Do I think that helped us kind of recalibrate and get refocused heading into Cleveland? I do. Um, I, I thought that was the one benefit of it now looking back on it. And uh, I thought our guys played with a sense of urgency in Cleveland and a little bit more detail. And then, obviously, we've got a lot of seniors. And uh, those guys, I felt like, especially in that second-half semifinal against Ohio, really took on a refuse-to-lose disposition. 100% coaching. Talk about that in today's game of how I'm having seniors who, know, who don't know how to play, who know how to handle adversity, and know how just to, to say, hey, calm down. Let's not let that let the game play us and let us play, play that game, having shot maturity, game maturity, and not getting flustered by pressure of trying to win, win or go home. No question. I, and I thought that we did a good job of just taking it one day at a time, trying to get 1 0. Then once we got past the quarterfinals, Try to go one and zero again, and I thought our guys did a really good job of embracing that, and uh, showed, like you said here at the outset, exceptional mental toughness because we were down in all three games, had to come from behind in all three situations, and you know give our guys a lot of credit for their resolve. No doubt, coach. I feel like you know that's a big thing about it. What but one thing never left you was your defense, and I know how defense is so important to win games. And discuss about trying to make sure you guys know in possessions with, with rebounds. Let's not commit crazy fouls. Let's be solid. Just be, we're solid. We, we can definitely get back just in a time. We're not just a top the score, but possession by possession, getting back to where we want to be. No question. Our defense has been our staple all year. We've been number one in the league defensively from really start to finish. And uh, our guys know, and we've got great leadership in the locker room. You know, we're, we played one of the worst offensive halves that we've had here in my seven years in the first half in the semifinal. We had 16 points, 13 turnovers. And I've got Greg Tribble in the locker room saying, guys, we're in this game 
and we're going to win this thing because of our defense. That's what's that's why we're still in the game. Our offense will be better in the second half, but let's defend in the second half like we did in the first half. And if we do that, we're going to be in great shape. That allows you to be consistent. We believe that if you defend and rebound and take care of the ball, regardless of shot making, you're going to have a chance to win most nights. And that's kind of been our staple. And coach, watching you drop the tournament, man, your own ball defense, guys, guys getting in front of the ball, not letting, not getting blown by. Talk about how important it is to teach that to your team and that have that mindset to this. Hey, we're gonna get in front of this ball. We're gonna be on this ball. We're gonna play hard. We're gonna do what we gotta do. Know our know our coverages. Know what we're doing on ball screens and not have many breakdowns. Why? Wow, what wow. I was like, watch you, coach. I didn't see too many breakdowns of your guys. It was really in the right position on, on what these teams were trying to run against. You. Yeah, for sure. We had really good focus, as I mentioned earlier. Thought we were really detailed. We were in the right position a lot. We didn't have many, very many busted switches when we were supposed to switch or busted coverages and pick and roll. I thought I thought our detail was pretty good, and especially on the defensive end. And, uh, you know, guarding the ball, obviously we've got good athletes and good on-ball defenders uh, that take a lot of pride in it. And when you have that talent, plus take you take pride in it, it's, it's a really good combination when it comes to keeping the ball in front. And Coach Gross, the man, somebody, Enrique Freeman, man, that, that, that guy, man, double, double for shame, man. Uh, what he did, he let you find his Ohio, what he did against Kent State, man. Uh, getting this coach, this young man every day, Coach. Uh, seeing what he does, man, on off the floor. Tell the listeners about his growth and development, how happy you are, what he needs to become as the Matt Turman MVP that, that, that now going to the big dance is creating here real soon. Yeah, well, his story's amazing. I mean, I, you know, obviously he started out in a walk on tryout to becoming defensive player of the year in 2022. And then Mac player of the year this year, he's led the nation in double doubles, uh, leads the nation in rebounding, uh, developed a three point shot, become a better free throw shooter, become a better decision maker, learned how to handle post traps. You know, he's done all these things and really evolved, added 40 pounds of weight over the five years of strength and muscle. So in, in elite cardio shape, he just continues to grow and keep getting better each year that he's been here. So and I, I still think his future is really bright. I think, you know, once that next level gets a hold of his body and he doesn't have to go to class every day because he has his bachelor's, he's going to finish up his MBA here in the spring and basketball becomes a full-time job for him. You know, I think he'll become an even better shooter, continue to add more muscle mass, continue to grow with his game. And I think his best days are ahead. He definitely made made that big that big three for you in the second half against Kent State, man. I saw that three go down, and I, it's, it's good to see a big man who cares about both ends of the floor and can shoot the ball too well. So I was like, hey, he's a bright future coach now. Just watch him play with such a joy, man, because you can see how he's so happy to be out there. You know how his hard work is paying off, coach. And I feel like he's a he's a very much a poster child for. Play, 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 play development, people development, and strength development, because that's your Enrique Freeman right there for you. Know, like, a lot of young men should look at him as an example of what, what, what they can be if they do it, do it the, approach the right way. No question. He's a he's a poster child for that. You know, and not only as a basketball player, but as a student, I mentioned he's got his bachelor's. He's going to finish his MBA here in the spring. And uh, he's like the Pied Piper, JR, on campus. I mean, everybody knows him. He treats everybody with respect. It doesn't matter their age. Not, nothing matters. Professors, other students, supports the other sports teams. Uh, the way he treats people, I, uh, you know, I tell my wife all the time that I hope we want our kids to be like that. His humility is what really separates him. He's a special person. 100% coach. Coach, kind of talk about that, man. I saw those Akron fans in the stands against uh, uh, every night, man. Talk about the Akron Zip Nation, how they support you, man, support your young men. The community of Akron is really behind what you're building down there for this basketball team since you've been there, man. How fun does it have them all with you everywhere you go, man? No, it's been awesome over the seven years. Increased attendance, more students in the AK Rowdy section, and then obviously Saturday night at the championship, you know, I don't have an exact number for you, but in my opinion, it was a lot louder uh, for us than it was for them. We had more people in there uh, and they've just really supported us. So can't thank them enough. They've been awesome. And uh, we'll actually, I, I think, Jr. have a pretty good turnout in Pittsburgh because it's only an hour and a half drive from Akron. A little bit different than Portland was two years ago when we played UCLA. So it's a lot closer for our fans, our friends, our families. And so hopefully we'll have a good turnout in Pittsburgh.
one hundred percent, coach. And uh, you got a tough matchup for Creighton. There. Coach McDermott's been up for a long time. Does a good job with Suns and NBA with the Pacers right now. So talk about what you're seeing for those guys on the film as you prepare your team for this matchup with out of the Big East with Creighton and Blue Jays out there, man. Yeah, they're really good, Jr. Obviously, they're top twenty-five in the de in defense and offense uh, nationally. Um, you know, they play both ends. Uh, Greg does a great job of coaching them. They run great offense. They run great sets. They have good movement when they flow, good bo uh, body movement, player movement, uh, puts his players in position to be successful. Shireman's a terrific offensive player. Uh, they've got great and very versatile at 6'6 six, six as a guard. And then they got great shooting around all that. And then Kalkbrenner's unreal. I mean, he's three-time Big East Defensive Player of the Year. So – when I, when I started thinking about this deal, I thought, man, there can't be too many guys that have done that. So we looked it up yesterday, and the other two that have done it are Patrick Ewing and Alonzo Mourning. So I'm like, holy cow, that's pretty good company. Um, so he's terrific defensively at 7'1", 270, and is really kind of the pillar of their defense. Um, they're good, really good, really well coached. We're looking forward to the matchup because I know both of you, Coach McDermott, love defense. Look forward to a lot of great possessions, man. Defensively, we're gonna see come down who executes the best as always, Coach. And I'll be definitely cheering for you as always, man. It's good to talk to you, man, again. And I hope you make, make a good run, Coach. We're talking again next week, man. <laughs> I appreciate it, Jr. It's always a pleasure to be on, and uh, appreciate the request. And uh, it's great seeing you. See you, same here, Coach. I always love it, man. ATL, baby. Let's, let's go, Cavs, too, man. Uh, I love it. All right, Thanks, coach. Jay. I'll see you, buddy. Take care, ma'am. All right.